ప్రివిలేజ్ Uh, it is my great honor to introduce Dr. B. Karthikeyan. Dr. B. Karthikeyan, working as assistant professor in Bishop Heber College, Trichy, Tamil Nadu. He completed yeah. PhD in computer science okay. from Bharati Dasan University, Trichy, Tamil Nadu. He did his MPhil in computer science from Bharati Dasan University. He did his Masters of Science in Information Technology from Adhikala Mata College affiliated to Bharati Dasan University. His research area is MANET, that is Mobile Ad Hoc Network Routing Protocol Optimization. He has invited as a resource person for several faculty development programs. He conducted and attended several workshops, national and international conferences. He published many high-indexed papers with more scopus citations. So really, we are glad to have such a great person as a resource person in this faculty development program, sir. Sir, now I request you to enlighten the topic AI in cyber securities. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your invitation, sir. First of all, I would like to thank you and management people who are arranging this uh, particular ftp especially i would like thank uh, would like to thank dr p kiran sri uh, he contacted me through phone and they get the concurrence and uh, arranged for ftp thank you thank you very much sir sir please sir thank you sir can i start my ppt sir uh, please please share your ppt sir So good afternoon to all. Can you see my PPT? Yes, yes, sir. PPT is visible, yes, sir. sir. Please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so good afternoon to all. This is Karthik Lian. So today I am going to brief about uh, how we can use the uh, AI in uh, cyber security. I think uh, we know the cyber. How is it? The doctor. How is it? How is it? So can I continue? You can proceed, sir. I am going to talk. So, I think uh, the cyber crime is a very vital role in the internet or in any one of the network. So we need some security in the cyber crime. So in my topic, I just brief. I just I'm going to give on uh, some of the introduction how we can use the AI in the cyber security. So before we enter into this AI cyber in cyber security, first of all we have to understand. So what is AI? That's I, I'm going to give just an introduction about that AI model. So what is AI and what is the cyber crime? After that, we enter into the AI in the cyber security. What are the analytics we can do? Uh, that means how we can provide the cyber security by the use of the AI. That's the thing we are going to cover. Okay. So first of all, I want to uh, give some brief about the artificial intelligence. So normally, this artificial intelligence is the simulation of the human intelligence. the process by machine especially the computer system specific application of the ai include expert system normally uh, it includes the natural language processing speech recognition and uh, machine vision and uh, understanding the surrounding but in my uh, topic uh, the understanding the surrounding is very very important so by the use of that artificial intelligence it the machine aware of its surrounding and uh, if it does something keeping that in the mind in order to if it is act to certain things that is very important in the cyber security so uh, the artificial intelligence that is a human information a human intelligence we just incorporated with the computer for the purpose i just add this ai in the cyber security so before we enter into the cyber security first of all we have to understand what is a cyber crime so normally the cyber crime is called as a criminal activity they are going to utilize the computer or the computer network or network device 
the most of the cyber crimes is com uh, committed by the cyber criminals. They are going to hack uh, for the purpose of the money. They are going to hack our systems and our information. So normally they are going to damage our computer. Apart that money, some uh, due to some reasons they will do this. So that so what uh, what we can understand means uh, we, need, we need some technique to provide the security to the information which one we are having with the network. So the cyber security is going to uh, normally the cyber security may called as a computer security or the information technology security. So it's a protector of the computer system network from information disclosure, theft or damage of hardware, software, electric device. Okay. So it is going to us from these kinds of the attacks. So normally and the mobile devices in Sir, Kathleen, sir, just unmute yourself, sir. Kathleen, sir, just unmute yourself, sir. Yes. Yeah. Ah, please. So, now, now, now I'm audible. You're audible, sir. You're audible. Just to see. Yeah, fine. Nice. So, when it muted, sir, I don't know that. Just to see. 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 Okay. Okay, I just start with the... Uh, cyber security. Okay. Yes. So yes. this cyber security, it is a practice of uh, defining the computer, server, mobile devices, electronic system, networks, and the data from the malicious attack. So, so many uh, the cyber security is very very important. But if we want to implement the cyber security, we are having lot of challenges. We are having a lot of challenges. For example, if we are going to provide. The solutions otherwise if you are going to identify the threats by manual that is the hunting the threats manually it is very difficult because if you are doing certain things with the manual it will take more time if if it is take more time in that time definitely the expense will be high so if you want to if you want to implement the cyber security by manual it is a difficult that is a practical challenge we are facing with the cyber security solution so after that suppose uh, if we increase the geographical di distance, it makes more difficult to track the instance manually. For example, if you have the distance in the time, we unable to find which thread is occur in the two different systems. That is a very difficult and uh, provide the solution for that thread. It is also very difficult. So like that way, uh, the finding the hackers or that intruders is very difficult uh, in the cyber security because uh, most of the hacker make use of the proxy server or the virtual private network. Uh, these kinds of the network they are using so that so uh, with this technique we are unable to find we are unable to understand where we are having that malicious. It is also one of the big challenge we are having with the we are having to provide this uh, cyber security. So like that way the cyber security is going to provide the solution after the attack is happened. That means that the problem may be occurred. After the problem occurred, uh, we may recover that one. For the purpose only, we are using that security pattern. Uh, it is very difficult. So it is a challenge for them to predict these attacks before they occur. Before they occur, if we want to predict, it is very difficult. These all the things we are having uh, for implementing this. Uh, uh, there is a cyber security. So we need some new data. Okay. So for that, uh, they introduced uh, the artificial intelligence uh, in the cyber security. So normally this artificial intelligence utilizes the machine learning and deep learning algorithm and it get the knowledge. According to that knowledge, it is going to do certain work. So for the thread detection, instead of manual, we can use the automated thread detection. So that facility is provided by the artificial intelligence. In addition, I want to explain one situation. Suppose you just consider you are having one network that a network gets four different attack named with A, B, C and D. Okay, the A, B, C, and D has a solution with the algorithm A, B, C, and D. Okay, suppose in one particular situation C is occur, three C thread is uh, uh, attack in the network. In that time, we have to run the full uh, four algorithm, all four algorithm. So after that, only we can find. But uh, uh, that situation needed only the C algorithm. But instead of uh, instead of that, uh, we have to run all four algorithm. So it is a time-consuming process. It is available in the traditional method. But uh, but if we are using the artificial intelligence to find uh, the cyber issues, so in that time, the artificial intelligence by the use of the machine learning algorithm and the deep learning algorithm, it is going to find the pattern. 
uh, it will it may match with the previous one otherwise it create the new pattern according to the pattern if we are having some problem it find the appropriate issue and it is going to execute that particular algorithm only it no need to run all algorithms so for this purpose it reduce the execution time that means it increases it, it is going to provide the faster response so uh, we are using the ai for the cyber security due to these reasons because it, it can provide the automatic threat detection like that way it can provide the faster response to the threat threats so why do we need a uh, ai cyber security detection system that is also very very important okay so normally uh, if we are doing certain analysis in the time that analysis is always started with the data collection okay so it collect all the data from the source and analyze from that analyze it is going to make the pattern from the pattern it is going to predict which type of a, a threat will be occur in the future so like that way the ai always always learning that is it is going to collect always it is going to collect the data day to day that is every time it is going to collect some data and it is going to evaluate that data so that the ai learns more over each and every time so it is learning each and every time due to that it can find the unknown threats also but in the traditional method we may utilize the blacklist and the whitelist uh, suppose apart that black and whitelist suppose if new threat is to the network okay but here it is so that it is find it is uh, it is involve the new it is uh, evolve the new threats by itself so that it can identify the unknown threat source so like that way uh, it is going to provide the uh, that is a better overall security solution for the threats so it is going to handle the lot of data because each and every time it is going to collect the data the situation data so that uh, uh, so uh, it has a capable to handle the huge amount of data in addition if you are having the huge amount of data in the time it may be after the duplicate process but this our in this particular ai is our it is a reduced duplicate process so if we if it is a reduced duplicate process in the time we can certify this particular security we can provide for this particular threat so it's certified so after that uh, due to this uh, learning due to this learning it accelerate the detect and the response time so for this reason so we need the ai for the cyber security detection system so in this slide i just make a simple uh, comparison with the rule based that is a conventional method and the ml based method so normally i already mentioned the rule based always utilize a blacklist and a whitelist that means it is one of set of the rules uh, it is defined already according to that only it is going to find all the threats suppose if the new Uh, threats is occurred. The novel cases is occurred, uh, like a uh, zero day threats. In the time, it is not available in that uh, black and white list, so that it is unable to find that but new things. But in the ML, it is learning every time, so that uh, it uh, normally by the use of the uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning algorithm, it is create some pattern. Suppose if the new pattern is comes, it is make a relation between the existing and the new pattern. By the use of that, it can find the new that is a novel cases also. so it creates some relation between the patterns with the previous one and the new one so by that way we can find the novel cases also so it is more flexible so we need not to give any uh, knowledge and the special knowledge to this particular system so that it is more comfortable to find the security threats so we can provide the cyber security in addition uh, it needs uh, very less uh, maintenance because in the rule based if you want to identify some signature that the new signature in the time we have to update it has some procedure we have to add to the rules okay then only it can find it but uh, in the ml based that is in the ai based uh, cyber security it learn itself so it is going to create a new pattern and compare with the old pattern according to that it find it is one of the security threat so we have to prevent that one okay that the thing it can identify itself okay so it is more comfortable compared to the Based. So uh, the AI-based cyber security system have the capabilities to provide the security for the data system as well as application. I think uh, uh, in the definition, the cyber security definition, uh, we uh, we mentioned uh, we have to provide the security for the data as well as the computer as well as the network. Okay, so it should have the capable to provide the security for these all the things. Okay, so now. what is the conclusion uh, with this uh, with this uh, introduction means the a is more comfortable for the 
for implementing the cyber security. How we implement it? If you want to do some ML and DL with the AI in that time, always uh, it is going to make some analytical work. From that analytical work, it is going to give some solution. From that solution, we are going to make a prediction with the real-time data. So this process have to done. So if we want to do certain analytic in that time, we have to gather the data. After gathering, that is a collecting the data. After collecting the data, we have to do some uh, data pre-processing. That means cleaning work. After the cleaning work, we have to do the. Uh, that is a. Uh, we have to. Uh, we, uh, we have to find the attributes. After the attribute, we have to make analysis. From that analysis only, we can find the solution. So uh, the no, normally this anal analytics is started with the data collection. So for the cyber security, we are going to collect the data from the four different sources: one from the user data, another one from the application data, the third one endpoint data, and the network data. These three, these four is the source for providing the uh, providing the data. Okay. So the user data is nothing but normally it is going. We are going to collect the user behavior uh, informations. That is one of the data. So, like that way, in the application data, nothing but it is a RSAP. RSAP, nothing but during the runtime, the application may got some threats. In the time, how it is going to reflect that information? We are going to save. Uh, we are going to save and create one data set. So, we are getting the data from the application and the endpoint. Like that when the end device, uh, that is a EDI end uh, endpoint detection and response. Of, uh, that means suppose if the endpoint gets some threats, how it is going to reflect? Okay, that information we are saved in the we, we are saved and created one data set like that way in the network. Normally in the network we analyze a packet and a net flow. Sometimes we analyze a domain name systems like that way we check and get some information. That information is saved and create the data set. Okay, from these four sources we are getting the data for the analytics. So now uh, according to the analytics, it is the data gathering data collection is a step one. Uh, we just collect the data from the these four sources. So after collecting the data set and uh, data, so we have to uh, maybe uh, that a data set uh, it is uh, it may be uh, in the row and column format. It, it may be low. okay. Yes. So in that time, it may be in the row and column format. The columns is called as a features. Okay, normally it is called as a features. In the rows is called as a row. That rows and columns may have the irrelevant data. Set. For example, if you are collecting the data from the uh, network activity, it may have some application data source. Okay, in the time we have to remove that. Okay, normally when we are doing the data science work in the time after collecting the data, we have to do the data pre-processing work. In the data pre-processing work, we have, we have to do the data. Since we have to remove that. Okay, so uh, after the data collecting, So after the data collecting, data is stored. After the data stored, we just clean the data. That means we just remove the irrelevant data and that uh, data is submitted to the data analysis. So between the data cleaning and data analysis, we are having plenty of steps. Okay, we are going to see one by one. So after cleaning that, what we have to do means we have to select the features. So already I mentioned that uh, that particular data set may have more columns. The each and every column is called as attribute, otherwise we can call it as a feature. Okay, so for example, if you collect some data from the network activities, it may have around uh, 15 columns, 15 fields. Okay, all the 15 fields will we will not use for the cyber security. So we may use as uh, a third and fourth column. But we have to find which column is more relevant to the uh, security provider for providing the security. So that uh, first of all, we have to make a feature selection. After that, we have to extract the feature selection. And we have we, we have to transfer this uh, selected uh, features to the analytical process. So normally we have to reduce the uh, size. Then only we can find the exact uh, security issues which one we are having within the network. So after uh, data cleaning, what we have to do means we have to select which feature is used to do for that particular cyber issue. Okay, that uh, selection is called as a feature selection. After that, that particular feature have to extract from that available data set and that particular feature is submitted to the uh, analytical process. OK, so then we can find the we can uh, we can find uh, we can analyze and we can find which type of the issues with thread is available in that particular data. According to that, we can uh, take the uh, remedies. So okay. next uh, we are collecting a lot of data. OK. But where, in which place we have to stop uh, the collecting the data? That's very very important. 
So we have to do some data cutoff. So the data cutoff component imposes the cutoff by neglecting the security events that emerge after the connection of the network or processor has reached its already defined limit. That means uh, uh, we have some limitations. So up to this only we can collect the data. Uh, if the data collection is reaches that particular limit in that time, we just stop the security event. Uh, suppose if we stop, it is a it is also very difficult, but we have to collect that. We should not stop that one. We just collect the remaining data, but we have to save it into one place. So when we need, we just make analysis and find which type of uh, threats is occur in that particular saved after the cutoff. So uh, we have an arrangement. Uh, that is, we have the data storage entity. Uh, that entity is going to store the, the data, which one, that means which one we collected after the, after the cutoff after the cutoff level okay that will be saved in one place so when we need in the time it is going to analyze and the output will be displayed in the dashboard that's that means we are having the visualization so normally if we are doing some analysis the output will be displayed in the visualization part that visualization visualization part may have the graphs the graphs are available in one one screen that screen is called as a dashboard okay it, we have we may have the report and the email notification these sort of things we can write. so uh, if we are using the artificial intelligence in the cyber security, so the artificial intelligence is going to do the analytical work. If you want to do the analytical work, we have to collect the data. After collecting the data, we have to remove the unwanted data. After remove that one, that means we have to do the cleaning. After the cleaning, we have to find which attribute, otherwise which field, otherwise or which feature is used to for finding the cyber issues. Okay, we have to select that one. After selecting, we have to extract and send to the analytical team. So we are sending like this, but we should have some limitation to collect the data. That uh, limitation is given by the cutoff. I just give the overall things, what we've seen uh, so far. So after that, so after the data cutoff, after uh, the future selection, the data, again, the data is going to store uh, in uh, storage. So the storing will be a parallel process. So normally, uh, so when the AI uh, going to do the analytical work, it is it, it, it how to utilize a huge amount of data in that time only we will get the excellent accuracy. Okay, so so after the pre-processing, after the, the cutoff, uh, uh, it just uh, the data is going to save in one location. Uh, it may utilize the big data concept or any one of the RDBMS. Suppose if it is a big data concept in that time, the huge amount of data will be sliced as a data block and the data block will be placed in any one of the data node the data node is nothing but it is a different different devices so here we can see so like that way we are saved so normally the block size uh, will be the 128 mb or the 64 mb but not uh, necessary to uh, limit with the 128 mb or the 64 mb according to the manageable level we can increase the size okay so we have some parameters in the HDFS. With this, we can with this we can increase the block size also. So, so what I want to tell here means uh, after the features uh, extraction, the data is sliced as a block and saved in the different uh, devices or the different nodes that is called as a data. So, if we want to do the analysis work in that time, the analytical process will be implied in all the data nodes. So, each and every block <clears throat> analyze separately and uh, combine together and uh, give into the data data. Dashboard. So why we are doing like this means uh, uh, already we men mentioned if we use the AI in that time, it will reduce the processing time. So the plural, par parallel processing will reduce the processing time. So for the purpose, we are using the parallel process. So now we are going to see how this ML and DL algorithm for enabling the artificial intelligence cybersecurity. So that the thing we are going to see. So this diagram explains that. So normally, I think we already seen how we are collecting the data and how we are doing the data preparation. Nothing but it is a data cleaning. So after data cleaning, after that feature selection, the feature is extracted and that extracted data uh, separated as a model. Uh, sorry, uh, separated as a data block. And that the data block is uh, submitted to the model training algorithms. It's, it may be available in the ML algorithm. So this algorithm is going to analyze that available data and find what kind of thread is available in that particular data. That means 
I will not give that pack, I give that information. It is going to form the pattern. So it is create the pattern. So if the data is in that pattern in that time, it has the issues. Otherwise, it will not have the issues. That's the thing. OK, so that information is formed by the uh, mo that is a model training algorithms. So normally, uh, if you want to utilize the two millions of data, you just consider that in the time the 20 percentage of data will pass to uh, pass to the training. Suppose if we increase the size in the time, the output will uh, have more accuracy. So we uh, so according uh, with the, by the use of the model training, we create one uh, pattern. That pattern is submitted to the attack direction model. So now uh, we have to check whether the attacks, attack direction model work properly or not because it has some patterns. The pattern is given by the model training algorithm. So for that purpose, again, we collect some data. So this particular data we are going to use for the testing. So after that, we are doing the data pre-processing. After the data pre-processing, the data is given to this particular attack direction model. It is going to process the data. That means it is going to analytic according to the pattern. Suppose uh, uh, with this we can identify whether uh, this particular pattern has a uh, capable to find the uh, threats or not. So by the way, by the way, the ML that is the AI is work in the cyber security. So in this way, we just automated the security issues. OK, so now what we have to concentrate means how we do that accuracy. So these four things is very important. So accuracy in the security model we are going to see. The first one is a uh, alert correlation. So after that uh, pre-processing, uh, that the data is uh, sent to the alert analysis model. So in this alert correlation, we are having three models. The first model is a uh, alert analysis model. So why we are sending the data into the alert analysis model means it is going to evaluate, that is it is going to analyze. And uh, suppose if it is identify any attack, just this alert analysis model informed to the alert verification model. So these kinds of uh, these type of the pattern is available in the data. So it is one of the thread. So we have to make a aware to all the data, uh, all the process. OK, that information, that process is done by the alert, uh, done by the alert analysis model. So after sending to the alert verification model, it uses different different techniques and identify whether that particular pattern as it is going to verify uh, whether the alert is right or wrong that is a falsely positive or not that the thing is uh, evaluated by the use of the alert verification model if it is true if it is fa fa falsely positive in that time uh, that bright and well arranged alert or then forward to the alert correlation model that's very important that is a correlation model that correlation model is going to find and uh, it is going to do the further analysis for the future one so that correlation, the that alert correlation model may include the different techniques like uh, rule based correlation, scenario based correlation and temporal based correlation and statical based correlation. These are the correlation we may use in that uh, uh, in that uh, alert correlation model. So it is going to inform and it is going to evaluate. It is going to analyze the data and find the pattern. So it is uh, it is very useful for the future. OK, so from that uh, alert correlation model, we may have some we may get some result. Uh, that result is called uh, correlated or liable. That is it is going to visualize by the visualization. model. So uh, so by the use of that alert monitoring model, we increase the accuracy of the security model. So in a, after that, after that, we are having uh, some. Uh, so in this. Uh, so we can identify that is a uh, that means we can find the threats. We can detect the uh, threats by the use of the anomaly detection. The anomaly detection is based uh, here. It is based on the signature based. Normally signature me signature based means already we know these kinds of the pattern is there. If the data has these kinds of the pattern in the time we will get uh, it is a, this kind of the threat. OK, already it is a defined. Already we know what is a pattern it has. That pattern is called as a signature. So this particular signature uh, formed as a rule. It is saved in the database. So this uh, anonymous, uh, anomaly detection utilizes these rules and find the threads. So this particular anomaly that is a signature based. The signature based, it is going to make the comparison. 
how it is going to make the comparison means according to this rules it has some pattern it is going to the normal pattern so it is going to check with the received pattern if it is has a difference in the time it is going to make a alert it has a issues okay that means it is a uh, it just match it is going to uh, that means what it is going to do means it is going to make a find the deviation so the anomaly based detection model analyze the data using the algorithm which one is we are having with the machine learning and it is going to identify the deviation from the normal behavior that is a pattern so we are doing certain process so how far it is uh, differ from the normal thing so that the thing is find by this uh, anomaly based detection it is used in the signature based anomaly detection okay so if we have some alert that is uh, we, uh, that will be displayed in the visualization model it is available in the uh, dashboard so after that uh, we are going to we are going to use uh, attack detection algorithm for finding the issues so it is look like our uh, ml process that means uh, from the available data it is going to make a training okay so from the training uh, we found the pattern so for finding the pattern we are going to utilize the machine learning algorithms and it is uh, submitted to the attack detection algorithm after that uh, uh, in the testing uh, phase again we collect the data and uh, make a data pre preparations after that it is submitted to the attack detection algorithm and uh, we find whether it is it has the capable to find the attacks so if it is done so we are going to give the output so with this pattern we can use a real time data and to find the uh, that is a detection uh, we can do the detection marks so finally finally we just combine all together so instead of using the single uh, algorithm here we are going to use multiple algorithms to analyze the data so uh, it is a last one so these are the advantages we are having with uh, the ai in the cyber security so this ai learns more over time that means every time it is learning so that it has more knowledge with that knowledge it is going to form the pattern and by the use of that pattern we can find, we can provide the cyber security so like that way it has more knowledge by the use of that we can identify the unknown threats also that is advantage also so it is going to handle the, it has a capable to handle the huge amount of data when we are having the huge amount of data in the time only the accuracy will be increased like that way it has a better vulnerability management and uh, uh, so due to this previous four point it is going to provide the good overall security so it it has a less uh, that is a duplicate process so that we can certify uh, these kinds of the security we can provide for this network okay that facility we are having so after that uh, we can uh, we can that is a it is going to accelerate the detection and well, as well as the response time so it is going to provide the authentication for the security so these are uh, the advantages we are having with the uh, AA in the cyber security so that's all sir thank you if you have any doubts you can Thank you, Dr. Kartikeya. Yeah. Sunil, sir, if any participants yes. wish to interact with the professor, they can. Yes, sir. So, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Dear participants, if you have any queries, please unmute yourself and you can ask Dr. Kartikeya, who is uh, ready to answer your questions. Please. I think they don't have any questions because it is only the very uh, preliminary things. Yeah, no, not not preliminary, sir. But uh, you uh, majorly just, focused just, uh, the correlation the between uh, the artificial intelligence as well as the cyber security, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, the flow and the preparation for this is uh, very nice, sir, because uh, you, sir. you started with uh, uh, what is uh, artificial intelligence. And then you came with what is a cyber security and all. Uh, then you focused with what are the challenges that we in, uh, face in the uh, cyber security. Then you incorporated the artificial intelligence in cyber security. And uh, why do we need AI, cyber security detection systems and all? And uh, you already discussed with uh, the rule-based versus uh, ML-based methods and all. And uh, uh, you mentioned how the deep learning and machine learning 
uh, how they are going to add in the cyber security and uh, how we are going to do the uh, data cut off that is uh, how we are going to remove the so, unnecessary yeah. data uh, feature extraction and how we are going to uh, do the parallel processing and uh, algorithms which we are going to be enable to artificial intelligence and uh, cyber security uh, so uh, like this you mainly focus the signature based uh, uh, anomalies detections and all attack detection algorithms and you ended with the advantages of uh, this uh, cyber security and so really uh, it is a wonderful session sir uh, everybody will got the knowledge and the awareness regarding the correlation between artificial intelligence and the cyber security so really thank so you so much for uh, providing so can you thank suggest you. any research area regarding the combination of two yes Uh, you can do your research in the cyber security. So normally, uh, if you are concerned with the routing protocol, it's more comfortable for the cyber security issues. No, I'm uh, my research area is for artificial intelligence, that means machine learning and so how I can add cyber security in my domain to like yeah. go for some general writing something. Yeah, definitely. It will uh, it will give the added advantage. Yeah. Uh, Madam, Rajesha, what is that we are doing in cyber security? Also, in malware detection and threat analysis, even in intrusion detection, also we are using machine learning and deep learning algorithms. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. so the same thing can be tried to differently like intrusion detection and intrusion prevention is also there we have several algorithms in machine learning we are using them even deep learning also now is integrated with cyber security so you can work on the areas like how do you analyze the patterns and find it is an intruder or not something like that yes which but here oh, i just given only the total outline yes yes right. but in the a we, we may have the uh, yes. ml and the yes yes okay. Thank you, Dr. Kartwell. It was a nice yeah, presentation. Nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. See you. So we'll get to the next session. We'll start sharply at four o'clock and nine. Hmm? Yes, sir. Dear participants, please note the next session. Yes, we will start by four o'clock.